This is Eric Mwade with Mwade.com uh, for the week of January the 23rd, 2012. Let's take a look at what the uh, possibilities for the markets um, in terms of the technical analysis are. Let's take, let's take a look at the Dow Jones uh, three-year weekly chart and we see that after the first three weeks of 2012 we are very close to breaking out here as far as the hourly chart, as far as the weekly chart for the Dow is concerned. Now that's pretty good if if you're if you're bullish and uh, you'd like to see this market uh, move higher you can see that we have a crossing over of the 10 week moving average and the 33 week moving average which is always bullish the last time we had that kind of a crossover was um, end of summer of tw 2010 we had a nice move higher and we also had the cross crossover of the moving averages sometime in July of 2009 and we had another straight move in the market so maybe we are setting up for another uh, blast higher now of course we'll need confirmation by the market breaking out uh, above 12,800 on the Dow somewhere on there is where the last weekly closing high going back all the way to April of 2011 so a breakout here and you might see this market uh, continue moving higher mainly because we see that the technicals are pushing the cr and crossing over the moving averages so uh, if we stall around here uh, then some of the charts I'm going to show you in this video do show the possibility of the market stalling uh, stalling in these current levels and yet some charts are moving higher uh, what I've noticed is that stocks that sectors that have already broken out as are uh, finding it difficult to hold levels above 52 week highs and um, but for now we play breakouts you, you need to play the breakout any quality breakout in the market because we don't know when this rally is going to stall uh, so you play the upside until it stalls otherwise uh, the market seems to me to have some uh, momentum to the outside now I'll show you some charts in the course of this video that might also show that we are very close to some kind of resistance in the market um, but anyway let's move on here the Dow daily again you see that uh, we have a golden cross which is a cross of the 200 day moving average crossing above the 50 day moving average that always sets up for a nice possibility of a nice move last time we had that crossover was again uh, September of 2010 and we see the market had a nice move into the early part of 2011 after this crossover here so we see another crossover here of the moving averages so net net you know you'd, you'd look for this market to push higher not necessarily day to day but even a pullback is not gonna be catastrophic at this point because we have a mar market trading above the 50-day moving average and the b above the 200-day moving average at the very worst we might drop down to the 50 or the 200 at the very worst there's support in this market on the downside so um, unlike the drop here you know like last year in the middle of last year when the market was trading below its 50 and the 200 day moving average uh, those ones are those are setups that can move a market low but we, now we have setup that can move this market higher just because the moving averages are way below and will offer support should the market pull back let's take a look at the nasdaq weekly and again you see even though the nasdaq has not broken out above its declining uh, top lines uh, line here we haven't moved above that we still have the crossing over of the of the 10 week moving average and the 33 week moving average that's always a good thing now let's take a look and see whether we stall around here on the RSI the last time we stalled on the RSI this level here corresponds to this break here and we had a, a a serious drop so we are this levels on the RSI level should we stall here this might be the highs for for a while in the market that's why I say let's play the upside but let's also be very aware that this market could hit technical resistance on some levels and stall if you take a look at the Nasdaq from a daily perspective what you see is that now we are hitting um, if you take the highs on the Nasdaq take that high on the daily closing basis draw a straight line you see that the Nasdaq is trading right here where you'd expect resistance whether we form resistance or not is hard to tell but that's the, uh, that's the possibility so we play the upside until the market confirms resistance take a look at the QQQ 
talked about this earlier this week um, when it broke out here now we are trading above the breakout level of 59.32 as long as it the QQQ stays above 59.32 the market should move higher if it moves back below 59.32 that's one of the cues I'm talking about conf confirming that the market has hit resistance so a move below this level and that's going to be your cue that the market is finding it difficult to hold current current levels and might be moving lower so keep an eye on that level above that the market is bullish below that the market is um, gonna stall now uh, the QQQ on a daily chart this shows you very clearly that we've been stalling finding it very difficult over the last year year and a half almost two years for this market actually going back exactly about one year going back to February of 2011 we've been finding it difficult to hold this level here every time we hit this levels we'll pull back but now we have a different looking chart because we are above that level so that's a bullish chart if it holds that you want to stay long if you see it break down below this level here then that's confirmation that this was a trap right now since we haven't seen the trap we have to default to believing that this thing wants to move higher take a look at the airline index what I wanted to point out here is here is an instrument here that is hitting resistance levels we'll see whether it stalls around there uh, but this airline index has always been for me one of the ones one of the sectors that always tends to predict where the market is gonna go so if it stalls around here I would expect the general market to follow too the banking index what I wanted to point out here is we are back at this critical level around the 200 day moving average declining 200 day moving average also happens to be the this was a low here um, break point there so this area this yellow shaded area is where you'd expect either a breakout or a stall right now we are at that critical level I don't know which way it's gonna go uh, but I would look for this one to confirm either upside thrust or downside uh, breakdown take a look at the BTK another instrument that is str struggling to hold the 200 day moving average we'll see how it's gonna respond over the next couple of days and weeks uh, the IYR the uh, real estate ETF again you see that now unlike previously where we were stalling in this yellow shaded area we stalled here once and had a drop and we were finding it difficult to hold above this level now we see that we are actually breaking out of this range here moving above this level here so net net looks good and unless it stalls so right now we have the possibility of a 200 day moving average and the 50 day moving average crossing over right now so let's watch and see what happens if it continues moving higher and then then it's set, the setup is very good for a continued move but if it stalls then you have to uh, you know question the, the quality of the current move take a look at the, and this is a reason why take a look at the first sector um, on one of the few to break to fresh 52 week highs the XHB um, again the home build home builders ETF you notice this was the high and we tried to hold this level here but even with a down with a strong close on Friday options expiration you see that it had a down day so we have a confirmed resistance here so if, if that continues being the case and if this thing keeps moving lower we have a failed breakouts and failed breakouts are very dangerous they can lead to a market uh, going down over many many weeks and months uh, XHB again I talked about this in my weekend video last weekend is if we take the highs on a weekly chart draw a straight line we are finding it difficult to close around that level this week we were above it for a while but we ended the week below back below this level so this to me is confirmed resistance also happens to be an area where you can see that the RSI is going to be showing resistance around that level there especially if we get a pullback in the coming week or so uh, the semiconductor index had a strong move uh, over the last two weeks and you see it broke out above the 200 day moving average which is net positive nice move above the 200 day moving average and above also about this area which was resistant so it had a nice uh, blast over the last couple of days you see that now you have the R the RSI 
breaking out about this resistance level here all right which by the way uh, is is what you want to see we broke out on the RSI so right now you know this thing could move higher maybe even consolidate uh, but not too shabby um, I would say I would like to bring back a daily chart I think for the Dow this is the Dow and what I forgot to point out earlier is that the Dow is earlier um, over the last couple of day weeks we were stalling on this RSI top lines but as of this week we see that the Dow is now breaking out breaking out of this range so that is net positive uh, we see it breaking out of what was prior RSI resistance uh, just like the SOX is doing on this chart now uh, you know the commodities some of them seem to be struggling like for example the entire commodity complex as observed by the uh, CRB you see that it's struggling to hold this price channel top lines right there also struggling to hold and stay above the 50-day moving average uh, we had already seen resistance coming from the RSI so the XHB I mean the CRB seems to be stalling here we'll see whether it's gonna follow through or not in the coming days let's take a look at the at gold the index you'll notice that gold is really finding support where you'd, you'd expect it to find support this line has been established for many uh, many months actually going back to 2008 and we bounced exactly where you expect to find support on gold I mean that was a perfect bounce also happened to be a bounce on a prior breakout level so this bounce here in gold is actually uh, exactly what the doctor ordered for um, gold nice support right there coming from multiple levels it's now trying to recapture the uh, 10 week moving average and the 33 week moving average so net net you know given the last three weeks gold is actually doing exactly what it needs to do if it's going to continue moving higher we also see that gold is now back above its 200 day moving average and trading just below the 10 week the 50 day moving average so above the 200 day moving average and slightly below the 50 day moving average um, you know net net you have to say that's a nice bounce we'll see whether it can continue moving higher and recapture the levels above the 50-day moving average for starters you know right now you know it's a uh, could be worse but gold is trying to bounce and maybe it's working its way back and might be moving higher over many weeks if you take a look at the gold from a from a monthly chart you'll see that it bounced off a former breakout level of 15,056 so we bounced exactly at that point right there which was a former breakout point here maybe you can see that so we you know we went all the way back to new highs came bouncing off this level and moving higher so that is textbook support so I would say gold might be back in play now another way to look at gold is to take a look at the DZZ which is two times inverse gold two times inverse gold and what you see here is this instrument seems to have hit resistance here so uh, if this is, instrument is um, finding it difficult to rally it suggests that gold might be back in play so this is the inverse gold and we see that the RSI broke down over the last uh, week week and a half so this RSI break here tells me that you know and also it's trading below its 50-day moving average so this instrument might be telegraphing that gold is back in play because this instrument which is inverse gold is looking like it's weakening um, and has weakened over the last couple of uh, weeks if you take a look at the GDX which is a gold miners ETF you will notice that even though gold itself the index is doing uh, doing okay and trying to find support and trying to move higher you will notice that the GDX is unlike gold almost about to break down to fresh um, fresh monthly lows right here just at the support level so gold is moving higher but we see that the GDX is struggling what that tells me is that um, you, you are better off playing the gold index yet avoiding avoiding the gold stocks gold stocks are not looking like they're in a good position now we've noticed that the and this is now the uh, crude oil market 
of the crude oil index, you'll notice that we've been finding it difficult and we continue to finding it difficult to hold above this uh, gray line here. We can seem to hold above that line and also can seem to hold uh, the levels above 100 and about 101. Can seem to hold that level. So net net, I think uh, crude oil will continue to struggle just given the fact that it can't break out and hold its highs. Notice that we can seem to also hold that RSI level which is a back test of this red line and I've talked about this for many weeks. Take a look at the EDZ. Now earlier in the last couple of I was talking about this huge huge wedge here and we were either going to resolve to the upside or the downside. Of course we see this week we gapped down and we are trading lower. This is this ETF is inverse three times inverse emerging market. Now what that tells me is that you know again this is another indication that the market might want to move higher okay the general market might want to move higher. Um, just given this chart by itself this is a breakdown of, of an instrument that goes inverse the market suggesting that the market is um, looking strong. Now on the contrary if you take a look at the ERY which is the ETF that tracks the ERY three times bear a three times inverse the energy sector you'll notice that as we are making fresh lows here in price fresh lows in price you see that the technicals are improving and that's why I'm saying even though the market seems strong and it's m moving higher you know let's not forget that markets can trap us into into one direction before it turns around so some of this charts here are showing possibility of a market that wants to recover. Now last week I talked about the fact that the Indian market seemed to have been stalling. It was finding it difficult to move above this black line but uh, this week we've moved above, punched above that. So the Indian market might also be trying to recover and uh, you know watch that. Now on the other hand if we walk into the new week and find that it has, it has a uh, kind of reversal here then this might be the high but for now we ended the week uh, the third trading week of January with a breakout we are going to default to this thing moving higher over many weeks the Brazilian market also had a nice breakout of its RSI remember earlier uh, last week we thought that it was stalling because it stopped right there and we thought it was going to move lower but we see that it broke out of this RSI declining uh, declining top line so nice breakout so net net whenever you see that you want to play the upside so we're gonna play the upside even though we can see that we are back at the 200 moving average so play the upside until until the market uh, reverses and whenever that, that whenever that happens who knows now we see that the UUP was struggling and actually back below 22.49 so we see that the UUP is struggling to hold its breakout level uh, given that chart by itself just by this without any more data uh, this is a failed breakout you see that the RSI is also coiling down uh, at a resistance level here so net net I'm gonna default to saying unless the dollar can, can uh, bounce and recapture 2249 this level here you know I'm gonna default to believing that the dollar is gonna take a break here or probably even seen the highs so you know net net I look at this as a instrument that is struggling unless it can recapture a former breakout levels take a look at the S&P 500 the retail index and you'll see that here was a resistance the resistance is at a five five four anyway the resistance is at this level here early in the week we were above that level but we closed below it so we'll see whether we can break out uh, as of this week uh, we punched a fresh 52 week high but could not close at a fresh 52 week weekly closing high now this is the uh, again the retail index on a daily chart the daily chart is showing us this was a breakout level to hold we've failed to hold that level once in uh, October of 2011 and even though we had a one week move above this level we had a breakdown the following day so we have a failed breakout here let's see how things resolve 
over the coming days and weeks but right now given that chart by itself that was a failed breakout we see here that the VIX again probably the most bullish aspect uh, in the market is that the VIX is struggling and the VIX is a broken instrument for now it's gonna take many 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 weeks for this instrument to recapture itself you see that we have a decline we have a crossover of the moving averages the last time we had a crossover was in July uh, July August of 2010 and we had a huge drop in the VIX and the market was moving higher in this time period so we have another crossover here which might suggest pressure on the VIX to the downside or maybe trading in that range for many months which might suggest that the general market might be on upside or on the upswing take a look at the some European markets here let's take a look at the French market you see that unlike previously where we were stalling to hold this level here this level is here our resistance we seem to be moving higher uh, we have a declining 50 day moving up a declining 200 and moving average so not really out of the woods but it's better because we are moving above a certain range here the RSI is now trying to break out above this top line here but it's not a, it's not a definitive break you know we could still have a sell-off here and that might negate this breakout here so net net slightly moving above this range here but not as powerful of a breakout as we've seen in other markets and we have again a declining 200 and moving average which is going to offer resistance at any rate take a look at the german market the german dax back at its 200 and moving average you know net net nice breakout because you see that it's trading above its rsi top lines here so this breakout says that the possibility is there for this market to continue moving higher now uh, that's that's you know if we go by what we see that's what we see a breakout and so we're gonna play the upside in the market until otherwise um, until otherwise recorded now if you take a look at this German market from a weekly chart you'll notice that if you take a look at the RSI this red line here you know we broke down here and we've been finding it difficult to stay above this red line it should we stall and confirm resistance on this RSI line here that's gonna be a classic sell signal uh, the the London market again you see that it's you know whole, finding it difficult to stay above this level here in fact it's just been trading at that range you know at this former breakout level um, and also the RSI if you take a look unlike the French and the German market uh, the FTSE here is finding it difficult to stay above this line here so this one is not giving me a, a buy signal uh, and should we you know break out that's good it's good to stay long if we continue stalling here we might want to pare down um, some of those longs or even or have stops in place and probably play some uh, shorting strategy let's take a look at the Hong Kong market again another market that is closer or trying to recapture the 200 moving average we haven't done so there's clearly resistance in this level here but the RSI is showing a nice breakout this RSI above this uh, purple line is nice breakout here over the last couple of uh, days last last week or so so maybe we are trying to, rec um, to reconstruct this huge drop in 2011 maybe this huge drop in 2011 is done and we will eventually work our way higher um, it's not a bad looking chart we'll see how things shape out in the coming days and weeks now like the like the German market we have resistance I believe coming from a technically coming from this red line this we are once we broke down on the underside uh, we've been staying on the underside of this red line and we stopped exactly right on that line so should we pull back that's gonna be again another classic sell signal now I wanted to end the video here with a, a revisit of the semiconductor index which I spoke about early in the video and you'll notice that what I want to talk about here is the red line here the RSI you know this RSI this lows connected connecting the lows of 2008 you draw a line straight line that connects to the lows of 2010 
so we've been finding it difficult ever since we went below this red line you know to move about the we stalled here which led to a, a, a serious drop so and we are back to the underside of this line what I'm trying to say is that even though the market is breaking out there are some signs that this is as high as we go and the semiconductor index shows that uh, on the weekly chart also on the daily for the semiconductor indexes what I did here is you'll notice that generally over the last year and a half or the last year we've been trading in this downward channel now we've breached this channel once which was this area here now if you take this line here brown line which is perpendicular to this uh, to this channel here right this makes there's a channel so we let we 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 um we were out of this range if you take the distance between this line here and the lows there it is equal distance from this perpendicular from this line here to where the socks is trading does that make sense in other words these two lines here are equidistance that arrow there and that arrow there what that means is that we're probably stretching out of this channel we are as far back as far out of this channel as can go and maybe somewhere here is as far as the socks is gonna rally so we'll see how things shape out but I think this equidistance here um, like I this equidistance this line here equidistance from this channel and equidistance uh, to the upside so equidistance down equidistance up outside this channel and also happens to be an area here so what I'm trying to say is that maybe this market is moving higher but maybe that's all we are gonna see for now maybe the market pulls back from here we'll see how things shape out but you wanna play the upside until the market itself reverses this is Eric Mwada with Mwada.com peace and blessings